like this experience happened yesterday morning this morning I didn't get crap just dream dreams like my dream dreams I would never really talk about because they're shitty like here's an example yeah no doubt it's like my implant probably just tried to create this dream dream I think it's my implants creating my my shitty dream dreams but anyway, yeah, um, my shitty dream dreams is like the way it went down this morning. I was, um, okay, it was like winter time. I was just in like a strange city, strange parking lot, and uh, there was like a ride the ducks vehicle in the back of the parking lot. And I know I'm forgetting a lot because like I say, it was just a dream dream and I didn't really care to remember it. And I remember just kind of going, you know, going inside, you know, going back and forth in the parking lot. But anyway, there was snow on the parking lot. And anyway, it was just a shitty dream dream. So that's, that's an example of one of my shitty dream dreams. 
and I um forgot like 50% of it already. But but yeah, um but even the shitty dream dreams can kind of like stay with me like like all day long like I can have uh like a really good lucid dream or whatever or out of body experience or whatever and it could stay with me all day long where I feel like I could still just like kind of pop back in the experience where it like still kind of the energy keeps seeping in from that other dimension or whatever you want to call it I guess it really is another dimension you know I mean even if the aliens are taken to or taking you to artificial or taking me to artificial dimensions it's still a dimension so it doesn't matter because 3d is supposed to be artificial so it's all it's all the same. It's all, you know, relative or whatever. But yeah, so it's weird because I never really, like, I'm watching Once Upon a Time, you know, like, how, how um, they're kind of living in two different, like, realities <laughs> or two different dimensions. And yeah, I guess it's, I never, I don't know, I guess I never did really look at it like that. Like me living in these other realities. But I guess in a way it really is true. Even though they may be just artificial realities that the aliens create. But yeah. It seems like they pretty much control the afterlife. That's what it seems like to me. Unless, you know, once you truly die and everything. Then they don't control you anymore. That's possible. But if you're not dead, and, you know, they take you to all these out-of-body experiences and stuff, they still take me They still take me to the heaven realms and all that. So it's kind of like, how do you explain that? But, you know, I'm still alive. So you may just really have to die first in order to really see, you know, what, you know, to maybe go to the dimensions that aren't artificially created by the aliens or whatever. But nobody knows till they die, you know what I'm saying? And channeling, all that's bullshit. Because the aliens are, you're just talking to aliens. You know, and they lie and shit, or just make stuff up, so. That's all bullshit. Um. I mean, I test my spirit guide, and she's right about a lot of things or whatever. But she's not really a spirit, she's an alien. Um. But yeah, so, um, so anyway, it's all kind of weird and confusing. Okay, so anyway, so, okay, so this exp experience was out-of-body experience, even though I didn't really have, you know, I didn't have to, like, astral travel to get to the experience. It was an out-of-body experience where I was, you know, walking around in the experience, and it was, um, it was, uh, it was still virtual reality, but it was um, lucid dream virtual reality, not 3D feeling virtual reality. So, um, anyway, anyway, it says, my reptilian abduction to the warehouse converted into mental retardation facility, and uh, they've taken me to warehouses many, many times before. Okay, some residents were adults and some kids, and in the experience, um, you know, I was thinking about working there. Except it was like, I, it, I was already there on my first day of the job. It was kind of like my first day orientation. But I didn't really know if I wanted to work there yet. You know what I'm saying? So I was testing it out. I was working there for like one day. Kind of like a one day orientation. And it was my first day on the job. And um, that number five. I'll talk about that number five in a second. But um, anyway, I, I put... The, this was the same reptilian that posed as a zombie in 3D, you know, walking down the road as a zombie patient. I, I just posted that, that experience that I had in 2014. That was, this was the same reptilian that gave me this experience, this altered state experience that posed as a zombie in 3D. Because he did one of the same things in this experience. He did one of the same things. Um... And like I say, most of the time when the beings, like, come to me and 
3D. A lot of times they won't interact and they're very, very, very scary to try to go up to. Like scary as hell. Um, except, you know, Anth Anthony wasn't scary. That was all 3D experiences. But that being that came to me in 2004 at the gym, he was scary as hell too. And, um, and um, the black guy that came into where I work at the government office in 2014, he wasn't scary either. And um, they do like to pose as black people. And they like to um, they like to put black people in my scenarios, and Middle e Middle Eastern people, and Mexican people, and India people, and Asian people, but they'll put white people in my experiences too. Okay, so like, okay, what time is it? Okay, eight oh eight. Okay, so this um, okay, so this experience went down like this. I was um. In this warehouse, it totally, I mean, it, it was, um, it totally looked like a warehouse. You could tell it was a warehouse that had been converted into a resident home for adults and kids with mental retardation. What's that called? It's called something, you know, those adults with disabilities uh, and mental retardation. And, and in real life, I, I knew, okay, and see, see, in real life, but I didn't have any of this on the brain, not recently or whatever. So, yeah, this experience was weird because it's not like I had this experience on the brain. It's not like I was thinking back 20 years ago when I was thinking about actually working at one of those facilities. So, in real life, I was thinking about working at one of, the, one of those facilities possibly, but I always knew you had to do, like... 24 hour shifts, you know, or something like that, and it's like, fuck that, you know, I'm not gonna fucking live there, you know, make a dollar an hour, live there for 24 hours or whatever, you know what I'm saying, um, and of course those kind of jobs are always needing people, because see, my degree was psychology, and some people do those kind of jobs with psychology, you know, now, yeah, it's kind of funny, <laughs> I didn't get any hands-on experience with freaking psycho people till after I graduated from college. Then I started getting hands-on experience with, I got hands-on experience with this one woman that had freaking 20 different disorders and it was just like, whoa. I didn't take offense to it because I knew she was totally screwed up. Um, because see, that, that was when I was 25 and I graduated when I was 24. But college is such bullshit. They never give you hands-on experience or anything. Okay, so anyway, so this experience went down. I was in a, uh, uh, a warehouse, and it had been converted into a resident home for adults with disabilities and mental... Mainly, it was supposed to be mental retardation. But... Um, Okay, so, so anyway, so I was walking around this warehouse, but it wasn't a warehouse. It was a mental retardation facility for, uh, you know, like re residents with adults. Mainly, um, it, was, it was adults with, um, ment not mental, yeah, yeah, adults with mental retardation. But as I started looking around at all the little sections, um, I saw um, some kids and some people that didn't really seem to be mentally retarded, but they, I guess they probably had some disabilities, but they didn't seem to be mental, you know, not all of them, not all of them were, I mean, like I said, at first in the experience, that's what it was supposed to be like, it was supposed to be adults with mental retardation, but like I say, there were some kids that were um, residents, and then there were some adults that seemed to just have disabilities as I started walking around. Um, the facility and the facility it was just one big square this warehouse and I parked out in the back or you know I mean outside of the I don't I guess you could call I don't know if that was the front of the building or the back of the building to tell you the truth but I was parking back in the back of the facility or the front of the facility because I went outside at least three different times because I wanted to go home because I didn't really 
I, I, you know, the whole time I was just thinking, I don't think I want to work here. You know what I'm saying? And, um, and, and I knew, and I knew I was thinking, like, I don't think I want to work, you know, in this experience. I knew you either had to work, like, 24-hour shifts or 12-hour shifts, and I didn't want to work such long shifts like that. But as I was walking around and walking around, I was thinking, hmm, you know, I mean, I already have a job, you know, in this experience. I was thinking I already had a job, and in real life, I already have a job. Under the experience, I was thinking, hmm, you, you know, I may be able to just work here, like, I wouldn't mind working, like, maybe one time a week, you know, but not, like, every day type of thing. Not, like, you know, five or six days a week. So I was thinking that, that I could maybe work there one day a week, but definitely no more than, like, one day a week. You know what I mean? And, um, and like I say, I was parked, um, the doors were um, in the back, but like I say, I'm not sure um, if that, because it, it almost kind of seemed like either or, it could have been the back of the facility or the front of the facility, either way you looked at it. Because like I say, I went outside a few times because I wanted to skip out, you know, <laughs> and then I ended up back inside the facility. Because like I say, it was kind of like my first day on the job, but it was just kind of like, orientation and I didn't you know have to work there I could just I mean I was just trying it out to see if I wanted you know to work there full-time or whatever or semi-permanently or whatever so anyway okay so I was walking around the facility walking around the facility and um in the middle of the facility there were um uh aisles of food and um, one of the aisles, all, like, nothing, I, I mean, there was nothing but just, like, candy and stuff. Like, chocolate bars and stuff like that. And, and the lady, um, there were two workers, two main workers that worked there. Two, uh, what do you call it? Head honchos or whatever that worked there. One black guy and one white woman. The white woman seemed to be about 60. The black guy seemed to be about 40. And he had, the, the, the woman, I can't remember what she had on, but the man, when he came up to me, um, I felt like the woman was uh, his superior. The man, I mean, he seemed, the, the, the male worker, uh, boss or whatever, both of these people would have been my, you know, my boss or were my boss if I decided to work there permanently or semi-permanently. The black guy didn't seem to be mean at all, but he had all white on, like all white shirt, all white pants. I do remember that for some reason, but the woman, I can't remember what she had on, but she was like about 60, and he was about uh, 40 or 38, something like that, but she, she was kind of mean and strict, and um, she did talk to me uh, a few times, and she told me that. She was just kind of like, you know, help yourself to all the candy and stuff, which is kind of funny because I was thinking in my head, well, um, you know, I don't really eat candy anymore, you know, and I don't, you know, in real life, I don't eat, you know, candy anymore, and so in this experience, I was thinking the same thing, like, it's like, wow, look at all the chocolate bars and all the candy and stuff, but she said I could help myself to the candy and stuff. Okay, now, when I was in the facility... I did feel like that it was, it was uh, about to be nighttime. I didn't feel like it was daytime. And when I walked out to my car three times, I felt like it was um, dusk, like about to be nighttime. And a lot of times in my experiences, it's like, it's like n n nighttime in my experiences. Okay, so anyway, um, which actually that makes sense because, yeah, that makes sense. Because a lot of these jobs, these kind of jobs, you know, you would work like from, you know, 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. to like 7 a.m. in the morning or whatever. Something like that, as far as I remember. But I never, like I say, in real life, I never actually worked at a place like that. But I was, you know, over 20 years ago, I was thinking about it. I mean, I knew that they were available to like work at those jobs. You know, I was thinking about it. I never did end up doing it, though. Okay, so, um, but like I say, uh, after I graduated from college, oh, yeah, then, um, when I was 24, um, many, many years later, when I moved to Kansas City, you know, six, seven years later, I did meet a woman that was like 50, um, 50, and her sister was like 51, and she did have mental retardation, but she was, uh, um, she was a high-functioning one, she, you know, she wasn't, 
Roberta would let her, um, you know, leave her alone for a few hours, you know, um, you know, because she, she lived with her, but she, uh, the, the mental, mentally retarded sister, she died in 2006. Because they're like little kids, they get the flu and shit all the time, and pneumonia, and then they end up dying. So she, you know, didn't live very long. She was like 52 when she died. Roberta, as far as I know, she's still alive. Roberta is not mentally retarded. She's very highly intelligent. But now she's like 60-something. But, um, but yeah, um, Roberta, um, her sister, I forgot her name, but Roberta, um, you know, her sister, um, she was a high-functioning one. So Roberta, she wouldn't leave her alone, you know, for several hours, but not like, you know, eight or nine hours at a time or anything like that, but a couple hours or something like that. And the funny thing is, when I first met her, she did not look mentally retarded. Like, if you just first saw her at first glance, she did not look men mentally retarded. But in pictures, you could tell that she was mentally retarded in pictures. But you couldn't tell in person until you started talking to her. That's when you could tell. So anyway, yeah, I, I did kind of think those people were kind of inter interesting. But at the time, you know, I already had a job. I mean, I already had a job, you know, when I was 30 or something. I wasn't thinking about working there at a facility, you know, like that then. But I just, that's the first time I, I had hands-on experience, you know. And, uh, yeah, they are kind of interesting because it's like they look like adults, but then they act like little children. So they are kind of interesting. But she was a high-functioning one. And, um... But yeah, like she would play with her little doll and stuff. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. But that was the only person I ever met. As far as I... And then, um, well, actually at the bookstore, I remember there used to be like a clump of like four of them that came in there. Not in a while, though. But anyway, so... Um, but that's um, irrelevant to the story, I guess. But, I mean, to this experience. Okay, yeah, so... I can't remember where I was at. So anyway, the... The, the lady, um, the lady, uh, what do you call it, superior, um, you know, she was kind of like the boss, and then the black guy was uh, the, the second boss that was underneath the, the white woman. And, um, but yeah, she seemed kind of mean and very, very strict. And like I said, she said that I could just help myself to the candy. But like I said in my head, I was just kind of like, okay, um, well, I don't really eat candy anymore, but thanks, you know. Okay, so anyway, as I looked around, you know, I started walking around the facility and stuff, and like I say, in the middle were those aisles, uh, shelves of candy, and then at one point, I did see three or four other women actually cook up the food, and I looked down at the food, and the food was kind of nasty looking, um, but not the candy, of course. Okay, so anyway, so as I started walking around the facility, um... And like I say, it seemed like I was in this experience for three or four hours. And as I started walking around the facility, which was just one big square, um, I, I started, like, I don't know, it seemed like I started over at the right part of the facility. And then I started kind of going left. But like I say, then at one point, I was already at the back of the, or the front of the building, whichever, which way you looked at it. And then I started looking from the left all the way around to the, right but anyway so um i started off at that upper uh the upper right corner of the building and then i kind of started walking around and looking at all the little sections uh partitions of beds and there were patients in each bed and like i say some of the patients looked like they were not patients uh, residents some of the residents looked like they were adults and some looked like they were uh, i mean some were children and some did look mentally retarded, and some looked like they were not retarded. They must have had some kind of disability. But one person, um, but she seemed like she was more like a kid, like, like 13 or 12 years old. There was one, one female that was sitting in, in the bed, and she had no eyes. She had no eyes. That's why I put that picture. I put that same picture in that other experience where the zombie, the reptilian, posed in physical form bobbing down the street, and um, he had no eyes, so that's why I know that reptilian gave me this experience under the altered state, and anyway, so I, I looked at her, and it's like, wow, she wasn't mentally retarded, but she had no eyes, no eyeballs, no eyes, and she looked about, uh, you know, 12 or 13 years old, and like I say, some of the other people, they look, 
some of the, the adults look totally normal. And I'm thinking, well, they don't look mentally retarded. But I guess maybe they also had some kind of disability. And, um, okay, so, and then, um, and then not long after I, I started, not long after I started looking um, at all the little sections, I mean, it's like from left all the way, you know, from the left side of the wall all the way, you know, going around to the right side of the wall and, I mean, to the back of the wall, all the way to the right side of the wall, it was all, um, like, each little section of beds, each little section was, like, sectioned off in, like, I don't know, like, eight foot, you know, eight foot little sections, and that's where all the, the residents were, and all those little eight foot sections that went all the way around, you know, they all, none of the residents were in the middle of the facility, it was, they were all, they were all out the, I mean, out, they were all at the, um, the edge of the walls, all of the beds that, you know, all of the beds where they lived and stuff, it was all, like, sectioned off in little eight, eight foot cubicles, so to speak, and, um, so that was kind of weird, you know, to be designed like that, but, so anyway, at one point, um, there were um, like a studious uh, couple, white couple, man and female that looked about 65, and they, they came in to see their, you know, their, their, I guess it was their daughter or whatever. Yeah, and actually all of the people were female. None of them were males. All of the uh, residents were females. I don't remember, remember seeing any males. And um, so yeah, so at, at one point, the 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 couple, you know, they were like the parents of the resident, of one of the female residents, and, and that was way over on the left side of the building. If I was standing towards the back of the building where the entrance was, um, over to the right, that's where one, the female had lighter color hair, and the man, he had darker colored hair as far as I remember, but they seemed to be about 60, and they went up to her and started talking to her, and then I saw them turn around, and they were just like, la 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 like see you later or whatever but they were just visiting you know they just came to visit their their child or their 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 daughter or whatever and they seemed to be about 60 or whatever so i saw that and then and like i say all of the all of the beds you know where the the residents lived it was all just in all up against the wall the left wall the right wall and the back of the wall um, not where the entrance was, there wasn't any beds there, that was where I just kept walking out like three times, and then I just kept turning around and walking back in, because I kept thinking like, uh, like I don't <laughs> know if I want to work here, and the aliens, they just kind of, they went off, went off my brain, because I've worked at like, those temporary service jobs before, and it's kind of like, like stupid jobs that I went to, and I didn't like it, oh yeah, so the aliens kind of went off that. They went off that because they always mock. They always copy, you know. But that was like a long, long time ago. They went way back. The alien, this alien that gave me this experience went way, way back when I was 25. So over 20 years ago because I did have a couple stupid jobs. And I didn't like them. I, I, I don't like those jobs where you just go for like a day or two and that's it. You know what I'm saying? And then never go back or whatever. I didn't like them. One was like you just went into a house and... They had a fire, and you sat there, and you scrubbed down the ceilings with these white sponges or whatever. It was just stupid. And then that other job, that was a temporary service. And then this other temporary service uh, made me go to some kind of medical facility, and I put medical equipment, like, on a tray and then sent it up to where the doctor was at. But first of all, I don't like, you know, working in doctor type of facilities anyway. But I, I, hate, I especially hated that job. So the alien kind of went off that, you know, because in this experience, I felt the same, like, like, ooh, like, I don't like this job. I don't think I want to work here. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, the alien went back, you know, in my brain 20 years. Okay, so anyway, okay, so anyway, um, I, you know, after I, I was placed in the facility and I started looking around at all the, the residents, um, the, the, the black guy worker, the, 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 not superior, but the guy that worked under the female, 
uh, he uh, he was standing there in the corner, the the right, in the back right corner, as I was kind of looking around at the at the the residence. He was um, he just kind of you know appeared so to speak right there in the corner, and he started walking up to me and he just um, he said some things. He seemed nice enough. He said some things like uh, you know like you think you like working here or something like that. But anyway, um, he seemed to be pretty nice. He didn't seem to be mean like the woman was. And um, he, um, like I say, he had his outfit. He had like all white pants on and all white shirt on. And like I say, he was, uh, he was her s subordinate or whatever. But he seemed like nice enough, but he was a black guy. And, and like I say, he was in the back of the building, so to speak. And then when I met up with her, the white woman, the superior, she was on the other end of the building, whichever, uh, whichever way, I'm not sure if that was the front or back, or I'll pretend like the back of the building was where I parked my car, and so she, that's where I met her, was at the back of the building, inside the facility, and then he popped up at the front of the building, and there was no entrance in the front of the building, it was just in the back of the building, that's where the entrance was, and like I say, he just popped up in the, the uh, far right corner, and just standing there, and he was just kind of like, you think you'll like this place? You think you'll like working here? And I can't remember if I said anything back or whatever. But um, in my mind, you know, as I was walking around looking at everything, 